I'd like to start this course with a little bit of a look in the rear view mirror and examine the history of why Ableton Live sometimes among certain segments of the audio engineering community might have a, a bit of a bad name when it comes to mixing. A lot of people regard it as not being uh, industry standard or as high quality as other mixing platforms. And there is a sort of legitimate reason for that. It's absolutely nothing to do with the actual mix engine in Live. But if we look back to when Live gained popularity as a DAW, the reason for that first huge onboarding of popularity was that Ableton Live democratized the music making process and made it very easy for a lot of people who didn't necessarily know exactly what they were doing on the technical end, particularly when it comes to audio, to make music for the first time. And so a lot of these users were doing a lot of warping, a lot of time stretching, without really any finesse to make sure they were getting the highest quality output. So there were a lot of productions coming out of Ableton Live, which made those productions possible, that didn't sound great because of user error. It had nothing to do with the actual mix engine. So I'll give you an example of that quickly. So you can hear particularly on the hi-hats how the warping, the time stretching, Ableton's native time stretching algorithm, is taking those hi-hats and chopping them up into little segments to spread them out evenly where it rhythmically thinks they should be without altering their pitch, which is the default mode that most people were leaving their audio in while producing these tracks. So when audio samples were being warped far from their original BPM, you're hearing a lot of digital artifacts. Now, it doesn't sound good. Uh, is that Ableton's fault? You decide. I'll just quickly show some other examples. So if I repitch the hi-hat, obviously the totality has changed, but it's much cleaner. Or if I select a complex mode, it's also much cleaner than the default beats mode. And within the beats mode, I could select a different transient preservation mode to clean it up a bit as well. If we go back to the default transient looping mode, still hearing those little digital artifacts, those little stutters. Same with the bass. I will go to complex mode. So it's subtle, but it's going to make a huge difference at the end of the day. And people not adjusting those warp settings early on, not even being aware of them in many cases, is what led to this reputation of Ableton not being a professional mix platform. But as I will show you throughout this course, nothing could be further from the truth. And we are going to look at creating professional sounding mixes using only the tools available in Ableton Live.